This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Tommy, do me a favor. Grab that there turkey call right in front of you. Yeah. And why don't you call in our friend Scott Tabor, <laughs> who I believe his daughter just got one this morning. Bring him in here. I don't, yeah, know if I can get, I don't think I can call him in. Does I'm that not, bring him in? Did that, did that wake there. you up, Scott? Oh, it's, it's Tommy's. <laughs> it worked. Tommy. What's going on, man? We we literally, my daughter and I are on a hunt this morning. She came in town, and I'm talking. I'm looking at the clock, and got 10 minutes, and they came up over the hill. Two of them did uh, at 7.58, and uh, and I actually shot it. She she couldn't get a shot at it. and. Uh, it was and so I had to send her down the mountain to get the bird because the radio. Was just, whoa, 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 whoa! Just, you made your daughter go get the bird? <laughs> hey, what? I've got good Labrador retrievers and I've got a good daughter. Now I go get it for her ninety nine percent of the time. I help her drag her deer out and what have you. But the, the phone was about to ring, and so I just want to make sure it didn't run away because sometimes they'll do that. Mm-hmm. She did now, good. That's, she did now, good Tommy, you're a, you're a girl, Dad. Wouldn't you have said there that my daughter shot it? Her first bird, and I got instead of saying that Scott shot it. I, I mean, I feel well, like that was first a of good all. I, I feel that. inferior as a dad to Scott because I couldn't eat, get either of either of mine. I get him to fish with me a little bit, but I, I I couldn't get Taylor Abigail to the woods to to kill anything. Well, and so I, I'm already behind. The, so yeah, he actually paid me the highest compliment you can have as a dad and called me and asked me if I would take the turkey hunt. Yeah, and I said of course I will. Absolutely. And, and I had her. I, I thought the birds would come up right in front of her, and they came up to the right and so it was just one of those deals it was either i shoot it or they're gone so like asking a fat guy can i take you out for donuts well absolutely you can you know? so. all right tabes you watched it last night uh it's a rough third inning it was a hard to swallow eighth inning uh, in your half what what happened last night well you know chuck and i you always you and i always talk about you get good pitching and timely hitting and and play clean infield then you're going to win ball games and last night the pitching wasn't bad. The pitching wasn't horrible. We didn't play clean defense. Uh, we had we lost probably three uh, three to four runs on on bad defense, and then the timely hitting came in in the eighth inning. Yeah, I mean, bases loaded. But you know, timely hitting is great. But they get the guy that came in absolutely. He was. It was just a, a moment, you know. And every pitcher has a moment. He had his moment where he was absolutely just nails. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was fun to watch him succeed, but I, I hated it. it was against us. I want to ask you about a moment in the game there in that third inning, and go back to the to the ball that went to the backstop, and then shortly after that, the home run. What's going on in a pitcher's mind when that happens? A run crosses the plate. Um, are the two things connected? Take. Take us into the mind of what might have been going on with Hunter Holland in that moment. You know, Tommy, I know you've never done this, but you know if you're if you're on the tee box and there's water to the right and you never hit it right and you flare one off in the water under your breath, you're just you know, kicking and smoking. Well, your next shot, you're still not over that first bad shot. <laughs> and then the next shot you hit, you pull it left out of bounds because y- your mind's not right. You're still thinking about what just happened. You know, throw it up to the backstop. A D one could pitcher, you know, unless it bounces short. But I mean, he 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 once in a while just let him go, and I think he's trying to throw a cutter. Every time he did it, I'm seeing him do something with his hand. It looks like he's trying to throw a cutter. Uh, his mind just wasn't there, and he was just thought, "I'll just go throw it over the plate and then let him, you know, he'll hit it and we'll get him out." Yeah. You know, sometimes they don't just get out, and that one did well. That one did get out. And that guy's not a home run hitter, but every kid there has the potential to go deep. So it's uh. You know, you just can't let up. And and having Hudson Polk behind the dish rather than Parker rolling, he's he's got some some back issues, is what Dave said. Is and how does that change things when you're Hunter Holland or McIntyre or Smith or whoever's going to get the ball next? Um, how does that change things for this team for the rest of the weekend? I don't know if they're letting their catchers call all the pitches or if they're you know signaling in pitches or how they're doing that. That's one big thing of of throwing to a catcher that's familiar with you. Uh, not as much you familiar with him, but him familiar with you. And also, you know, if you're going to throw a breaking pitch in the dirt, you need to know that it's not going to go to the backstop, that, that they're going to block it. Even if they don't feel it, at least they block it. Mm-hmm. So there's that's a confidence thing. And so that sometimes allows you to let your mind drift a little bit instead of saying, well, I'm not going to snap it off in the dirt and try to get a swing and miss. And you leave it up a little bit or you don't, you don't finish the pitch and, and you don't get the sharp break with, uh, you know, with depth on it. You end up, you know, things happen. Yeah. 
two bright spots from the game last night. We've talked about Kendall Diggs and the the snare he had out at the wall. He had a great night at the plate and a, a, a good double in the ninth inning. We've discussed it. I thought Ben McLaughlin was another guy that uh, – I think Chuck, you and I just say he's just starting to he's starting to come on at the right time. But uh, Tabes, those were two guys last night. I thought at the right. plate, and there weren't many. Callie would be another one that that really stood out in that uh, in the, in the uh, six five loss. Well, if you'll watch some of the tape on McLaughlin, and I noticed this last night, you know he is a he's got a great great eye, and he's got great hand eye coordination, and he can put the bat on just about any pitch. Uh, and when he gets his hands out a little bit, doesn't have to swing hard. It doesn't look like he swings at all. And it's a good line drive. Uh, I, I haven't seen him take that big home run Brady Slavin swing yet. I want to see that eventually come around. I think when he gets a little more confidence, feels comfortable with the plate, uh, we'll see a little bit more of that. But he is a good hitter. You know, it's exciting to watch. And Diggs, I think we're seeing the digs that everybody thought we would see. Uh, and it's kind of it's fun to watch yeah. the progression of that. Guys, we, he, you bring up Slavens there. You get that opportunity in the ninth. It, it, didn't you just feel yeah. sitting there watching the game here? It's going to be a Brady Slavens moment right here. And, yeah, uh, I really just, did. This didn't pan out. I really did because that's what this team is. This team isn't great. This team doesn't have uh, – we're not going to score 10, 15 runs a game every game, and we know we are. We have that potential, but we've got a lot of good players, a lot of timely hitting, uh, and the pitching has come to where it's not great pitching. But it's it's good pitching and it's solid pitching. You know, I think if we clean up our when we clean when we're cleaning the infield uh, and we're playing good defense, you know, we're tough to beat. And last night we just the next two games, you know, flip the other way. Hopefully they will. We're talking with Scott Tabor, former Arkansas College World Series pitcher. Scott, when you guys dropped a game one in the series, what would Norm say to y'all after a game to get y'all ready for two and three? <laughs> Is this a PG rating? PG thirteen? <laughs> no, Norm. See, we played. Yeah, we played one Friday, one on Friday night, and then a doubleheader on Saturday. Uh, and uh, you know, Norm was. There were different times. It kind of depended on how you lost when you lost that first game. And if it's a good, hard fought two to one game, you know, he just said that a lot. He goes, "He had a good circle." He goes, "You know, I don't know. You know, let's go get him." And you go, "Okay." <laughs> and that's pretty much it. But because nothing really went bad, it just didn't go right. And and the, but it's a game to kick the ball around, uh, you know the or don't get some bunts down to move a run over, or just the little things, the fundamental things that win ball games that are nip and tuck and one pitch and one error or one unmade double play uh, ends up costing you the game. You don't know it's costing you the game at the time it happens, but it ends up costing you the game. He he could make sure that you you knew that that happened. He always made sure that you knew that happened and. I always had a tendency to get on the opposite side of the circle when he was talking when he was in that kind of mood. <laughs> I like to stay away from <laughs> I wasn't very fast. Power mumbling. <laughs> <was pretty> smart, <laughs> so, all right, so uh, what's your intellect, what's your gut feeling tell you that's uh, that's maybe the next move for who gets the ball tonight? Uh, Dave went came up just short of giving us the name but thought it'd be some of the normal guys. Is it McIntyre? Do you go to Hagen Smith? What happens the rest almost, of the way when you feel like you got to win game two here? You know, you almost hate to see him go away from the formula of using Hagen to come in and finish the game. You know, our, our starters that we have uh, kind of burned Carter. Well, not kind of burned. Well, he, Carter uh, only threw 39 pitches last night. And I think he took him out. And I'm going, why is he taking it? And I'm sort of thinking, well, he doesn't want to get caught up in a, in a 60, 70 pitch outing. Uh, so I think I think he probably will go with McIntyre. That's my gut. He'll go with McIntyre and keep playing it the way we do. And if if he gets in trouble early, even like third, fourth inning, I think he'll bring Smith in. All right. So uh, it uh, should be fun tonight. And it, it, you know, it feels like a must win. It's not, but it kind of feels like you got. <laughs> no, it's not. Every game, <laughs> Tommy. Every game feels like a must yeah. win, and that's why. And that's the way they're playing. And I think that's their formula right now is is let's win this game and we'll let tomorrow take care of tomorrow yep. and that's why smith has not become mm. you know he just puts him back in there and lets him start and it's been working you know the, the the kids are responding to it because it's they play every game like it's a must win game uh because it's just points all you're doing is gathering up units you know how many units did you have at the end of the conference well we had 14 how many units do you have well we had four all right we won so they're just that's all they're doing just counting points just getting up points and every game is not the end of the world, and it's not the top of the world. So uh, I, I think they'll do well. I think they'll take two. It just feels like everything you gained last weekend, you, you don't want to give any of it back. And if you don't win these next two, it feels like you're giving a little bit of it back. So, 
Yeah, you know, one base hit last night, and we'd be having a different conversation right now. Yeah, yeah. that eighth inning, you just, you just, that's just something you just hope you can avoid. All right, well, congratulations to uh, to you and Mally on getting that bird called in and, and down this morning. So <laughs> she, she did exceptionally well. Actually, she saw the birds. They stayed snuck up to the right. I didn't even see them. <laughs> she said, "Damn, she didn't want to go back there." <laughs> it's only fifteen yards away. <laughs> well, uh, she gets half. She gets half credit. Y'all go and enjoy that, and we'll talk to you next Friday. All right, brother. Take care. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season, as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL hockey, right down to UFC and boxing. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way for you to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's B L E A V. B L E A V. Bet online. Where the game starts.